Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. I'm Dwayne Kohler, and we are talking rabbit hunting today. Been wanting to talk about this for years, but we finally got we finally got a rabbit hunting expert, Dan Nelson. Dan, welcome to Crawford County thanks, Outdoors. Thanks for having me. I've known you your whole life, and I've known this is something that you that you really love. Yeah. I want to mention one thing first, though. You're one of the very few guys that I know that's actually harvested a bear here in Pennsylvania. Oh yeah. The the um, the hunting traditions built into you, right? I mean, you you you're yeah, kind of a lifer up, on that, up, right? Yep, growing up and been here hunting all my life. So so let's talk about rabbit hunting for a second. So, so it's like, yes, you can walk out in your backyard, maybe with your 22 and maybe get one. And I want to tell you a story about that later on, but, <laughs> but, but also it can get kind of complicated. You might need some real specialized help, you know, like yeah. as in special dogs. Special you dogs might need some, exactly, uh, yeah. So, so let's talk about the whole thing for a second. So, so get, where do you start? So basically, I mean, you gotta, beagles are the, normally the, uh, the dogs that you, you use for rabbit hunting. Um, we ha I actually have two beagles, um, four year old beagle named Charlie and then a one year old beagle named Emmy. So basically what you have, you have to train your dog how to um, rabbit hunt, you take them out, get them used to the smell. Um, with Charlie, when we got him, we were living down in Pittsburgh and we would just walk around the neighborhood and he just saw that one smell and he just, you knew he was a rabbit dog. He just would never <laughs> let go on that rabbit. But then came back, moved back up here and took him out to Woodcock and let him run around, get him in the scent, kind of train him how, or teach him how to run or, or to run the rabbit, bring him back to me. And But he learned pretty quickly. And then the young one just followed fo followed his footsteps and learned right off of him. So so, rab so rabbits, it, let's let's talk about rabbits for a sec. Um, and I want to come back to the dogs too, because I, I enjoyed spending the day with you follow, yeah. following around watching your dogs. They are great workers. But <laughs> So the rabbits, um, when I first started hunting, I didn't hunt as a kid. I never got started until after I was in like the very tail end of college. And, and um, uh, when I was in grad school, it's like I was having a hard time getting some groceries. And I actually appreciated getting the occasional rabbit or yeah. squirrel. And I got, got a pheasant. That was that, that's what really got me going to pheasants. Was was uh, my very first pheasant back. But I'd gotten rabbits before that. But but um, they now. now my observation without a dog back then was if you'd go maybe kick like the brush pile you know maybe one would come squirting out and if you, you know, if you could hurry up and get a quick shot you know they're, they're like they're like f flying but but it's a whole different it's a whole different thing when you got some good dogs that, that can really work that yeah rabbit, it, right? it makes it pretty interesting I mean it's very exciting just hearing the dogs go and get real close to the rabbit and you can you can just hear them out there about hundred a couple hundred yards I think that's the thing the most exciting about like rabbit or rabbit hunting with dogs but I mean you can still walk around and kick up br um, brush piles and still find the rabbit Rabbits, but just hearing those dogs go is probably the best thing about rabbit hunting. So if I'm going to pick a, a certain, you know, going to the game lands, or I'm going to pick a friend's, you know, farm property or whatever, where am I going to walk first? Am I going to walk around like like where the field meets the swamp, or like, like where the field meets the woods, or what, you know, or, or where the where the maybe in between the woods and the field, maybe there's some brush. You know, is there is there a magical is, place there? It's that's, just where it's really thick at. That's where they're most likely to hang out because they like to stay away from the predators like the hawks and the coyotes, but. I mean, you just got to find where it's thick and brushy and there's um, food around, but they, that's pretty much the most parts of where you want to go hunting at. So edge of, fi edge of fields, um, in the thick of stuff, mostly on the edge of the woods, but, um, but yeah, anywhere pretty thick, that's where you're going to find those rabbits. So it's, it, in a way then, it's kind of like deer hunting. I mean, the deer, they don't want to get too far away from the fields, but they don't want to be out in the field yeah. all the time. They, you know, they're going to go out there maybe and, you know, carefully, you know, go along the edge. But the rabbits, they're more like for, like for berries and for seeds and yeah, that kind of stuff. Seeds, yeah. Now, I, I have some property and it's, it's um, real undeveloped and real tangly and, and full of brush and whatever. I, so we planted Christmas trees. We planted 300 Christmas trees and all excited about, you know, eh, maybe a few years down the road we'll have some Christmas yeah. trees for sale or whatever. The rabbits ate them all. I mean, I, I think of the 300, I think maybe there's 35 or something of them left or whatever. Yeah. But, they, but they didn't like eat them. They just like skinned the bark off of them, you know? And it's like, like right, right at the ground. So it wasn't like something, it had to be a rabbit. I mean, because, you know, and then some neighbors up there were, do you mind if we hunt rabbits? I said, oh, please do, you know? It's like, them, they, yeah. they, they were like, they wrecked all my Christmas trees, you know? So, so they, I, I know they, they got a bunch of them out of there, but, but um, um, so, I, I want to I ask you a question too about something else you said. This year it's been kind of a um, tricky year in, in the regular small game season. You know, the weather was nice and boom, it got cold in a hurry, you know. And so, do you generally go out like at, at the same time, you know, as like the pheasant hunter guys? I mean, I'll bump into a few guys hunting rabbits, but not really so much in the early season. It's more later. It yeah, seems more, like when it, more later. That's when a lot of guys go hunting because they can use the track, they can find the um, tracks, they can track the rabbits, see where they're at in the brush, brush piles. But I mean, you can hunt in the fall and the winter, and I think the season runs till about mid-February. So, but it just depends on how much snow we get and how cold it is. Um, I know the one day we were going to go out, but it was just too cold for the dogs, and they just hurt their paws. So, we had to be careful with that. But now, there's a real distinct way to pick out a rabbit track versus a squirrel or versus some other thing, because their 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 hind feet 
you know, are, yeah, are, they're, are they're bigger and their legs, are, their hind legs are longer. And so they have two real distinct, and then the, the two front foot feet marks are kind of like in front of each other, mm -hmm. in between the two hind feet yeah. marks. So, it, so it's a, it's like, what are they doing? You know, it's like the, the feet are wide, and then the two front feet kind of go in, in between. So it's like the two front feet are kind of like one in front of the other a little bit, but then the two, the back feet are wide. Yeah, right? so, exactly. So when I when I saw that track, so I'm gonna, I'll tell you a story later. But when I saw that track, it's like, ooh, there's a rabbit. <laughs> yes. So well, let's get the dogs out because my dogs aren't aren't necessarily the same. Well, let, 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 let me let me head there next. So when whenever a, a beagle, so my dogs are, they're pheasant flushing dogs, right? I mean, they, they bust in there and up goes the pheasant, you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily work as well for a rabbit because I think the rabbit's gonna, um, well, it, let me ask you that. You know, what is the best way for the dog to approach the rabbit to, to, to actually get you to harvest it? I mean, it's the same thing. You gotta crash into the brush and kick them out, but a lot of times the rabbit will hear you right when you walk into the woods, kind of like with deer, that they'll just take off and the dog will be wa walking around, they'll pick up a scent and then just take off. But I mean, there's sometimes where you'll kick a rabbit out of a brush pile and be like almost on top of the dog. So you just never know when they're gonna kick out of the brush pile or not. But most of the time you wanna be crashing around the brush to kind of get them moving and kicked out of their little hole. So my, my dogs are, they run with their heads up, um, and so they're scenting from the air necessarily. And I watched your dogs, and their heads are on the ground, yeah, and they're, like, they're like, like right on the ground, they're back and forth, back and forth. And when they're on the scent, they start, they start you know, a, a tone, and it's like you, you can tell from yeah. their voice, right? That they're <laughs> yeah, you know, you know when they're on a rabbit, because their bark is just, it's just something out of, out of this world is hearing their, them go. And um, yeah, their noses are always to the ground, and they just start barking and yipping, and that's when you know they're on a scent. And so, and they're, and they're, I mean, it's almost like, it's almost like a line of ground yeah. on the ground that they're following. And know? a lot of times they'll go and they'll, they'll run the rabbit and then they'll lose a the scent. So they'll backtrack and then they'll come back and they'll circle around and catch the track again. Or it'll go through some water like it did in that one hunt, it went through that little swamp area and then they came on the other side and picked up the track and took off. So it just, just really depends on where the track's going. Now I, I tried to do some research, uh, read articles that were. That's not exactly research, but <laughs> but um, several of the several of the articles said that, that rabbits generally don't range that awful far. They, no. they generally stay stay in 100 or 150 yard. You know, so so when the dog busts them out of the brush pile or whatever, they, they're going to try and come back to where they were. Right? I exactly. mean, they're going to come back to their hiding spot. Um, so do you, do you wait? I mean, do you, you know, if the dog is running it or is you know is, is it like going to loop back to you? Is that's it's mo probably 90 percent of the time time that of the rabbits that I've gotten they usually looped around to the same spot where you kicked them out at but I mean you can move up and kind of you can since they run that almost like a big loop you can almost catch them where they're going to cross or turn so it's just just kind of knowing which way your dogs are moving and which way they're turning you can kind of guess where that but most of the time if you stay in, stay in the same spot where you kick the rabbit out you're going to find the rabbit right there <laughs> so now let me tell you my let me tell you my hunting story so lisa needed to she's cooking for us today so i always look forward to that when oh. we have a hunting show here for <laughs> for for crawford county outdoors and lisa's going to cook up for us but she wanted two rabbits um to, to make the recipe for today and and uh, one that kind of demonstrated how to put all together but one that needed to be in the oven ahead of time and so you know so so all that so i was desperate to find another rabbit you got one and you know we, you know we can talk about that in a minute here but but um, um, so I've got my dogs and they're not exactly rabbit dogs you know they're they're, they're just they're too high strung I think you know for, for, for that um, and I see these rabbit tracks one day in the snow and it's like oh you know and just uh, fortunately I was able to corral and I just had the one dog with me I, I was able to corral Butch he's he's um, the youngest one mm -hmm. and man is he energetic and um, uh, I was able to corral him and get him get him put away and um, here I see the rabbit often you know it, off in the distance and I was able to get it with my 22 um, so now let me ask you what's the right equipment to use I, I've heard other people let's say oh no you got to use 20 gauge and you know now if they're running I, there's no way in the world I would, I would have been able to hit it with a 22 but this one was hiding and I, I, I just happened to see the ear stick it up and it's like ah I saw the tracks and I grabbed the dog the dog didn't chase it you know and, and um, uh, w was able to get it with a 22 so w what's the right equipment what's the right I mean, approach and my, is it, like you said I use a 20 gauge shotgun and that's what I use and it's what has been useful for me the past 20 some years hunting so so when you go when you go to the sporting place to practice, they actually have a rabbit target that they roll it on the ground, and sometimes it'll bounce and whatever yeah. you know. And it's like your my brain says it's not flying. I don't have to lead it a mile, no, whatever. Just, but you have to lead the thing. Oh yeah. I mean, if you try and shoot at it, you can see the grass fly up behind it, and you don't you don't break it. Yeah. So well, one, when you're shooting a running rabbit, how do you do? I mean, what's I the, shoot right with well, the one. Actually, the one I got, it was running across the field and. I had to aim a little ahead of it and shot it. And luckily, I mean, your bullets are going to spray a little bit, but it got it and took it down. So, so there's a, there's an old saying that some of the guys when I was first going back in skeet, you know, that 
butt, belly, beak, bang. So you're like you swing through it, and once you pass it, then then you yeah. shoot. Like once you're in front of its head. Like, exactly. And, and when I'm when I'm taking guys out, maybe for their first time on a pheasant hunt, I'll say to them, it's like your brain sees this pheasant. It's it's this long, and you know now half of that's tail. You know, so if you shoot at the middle, you're gonna maybe knock some feathers off the tail. But so th focus on the head. You know, and and then I'll, I'll remind them that old saying, butt, belly, beak. So you're you know when you move your gun, you're moving it through it. Then you pass it. Then you pull the trigger. Are right? yeah. same same thing. Same thing with the rabbits. Yeah. So why 20 gauge? 20, I mean, it's just what, I guess it's what my dad used and what he's taught me, so, I mean, it's just a good gun to use. It's light, it's easy to carry. Um, just, yeah, just what I've been using, it's just a light gun that you can carry through the woods because you're going to be checking or moving through a bunch of brush and you want to make sure you can carry something light that you can pull up and shoot and quick shoot the rabbit butt. So I have a 20 gauge and it's like five pounds, and I have a, 12, a couple 12 gauges, and they're like seven and a half or eight pounds or whatever. And it sure is nice carrying a five and a half oh, pound gun rather all than day. the eight pound gun exactly. all, all day long because you might be out there for quite a while or whatever. And it's like it doesn't seem like anything, but after a while, your arms do get. So another thing, whenever I'm taking guys out pheasant hunting, I'm always telling them keep your muzzle pointed up in the air because you don't want to be swinging past the dog and everything. Now, you, 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 is it the same thing for keep Abbott? your muzzle up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what's the what's the technique to I mean, I'm assuming it's a pretty quick shot most of the time when it's because the rabbit's fast. I mean, yeah. it's like a lot of time, like a lot of times you you'll just barely see it in the woods and you'll just pull up and make sure that it's not the dog and shoot and you most likely will get it unless you have a good shot. But because you'll be in like a thick of stuff, there's been times when I've been on my knees in the woods and <laughs> <laughs> trying to shoot a rabbit through the bunch of a bunch of brush. But other than that, I mean, you just got to make sure you get get a nice beat on the rabbit and. Pull up and shoot. So uh, another thing I've noticed this year, it, it seems like the, the when the like at the mid part or tail end of, of the deer season, it seemed like the snow kicked in and it got real cold. And, and um, I don't know why, but I've seen so many hawks this year. Um, and I know hawks. We did it. We did a falcon show here well, probably five or six years ago something like that and and we followed a beagle and the beagle flushed a rabbit and the hawk boom got, came and got you know hammered that rabbit that was one of the coolest things you know ever but so the rabbits always know that there's predators out there and so they're that's why they're hanging out in their, i'm assuming that's yeah. why they're hanging out in their brush pile and so they're probably not going to be out in the open because um, no. it's not just hawks but it's maybe foxes maybe coyotes maybe other things that they're that they're nervous about all the time anyways uh -huh. So, anyways, so th that's, I mean, I guess that's why we're looking in brush, in brushy, you know, yeah. real thick. Th Most of the time, you know, you're looking in the brush because they want to be away from the predators and hidden, kind of sneak around a little bit rather than out in the open where the hawks or the um, coyotes or foxes could get them. The day that I, the day that I got this rabbit, um, the dog flushed three birds, and I'm like, wow, you know. And, and of course, when I go look, every one of the birds he flushed was a hawk. <laughs> so it's like, well, so it's well, wintertime. Well, There's no pheasants left over, but now he's finding hawks, you know. And oh. So I'm glad he didn't grab one on the ground because that, that might have been kind of nasty, you know, if that <laughs> yeah. that had been a, a tangled tangle up there. But um, yeah, the, but but the hawks, it just seems like this year they're. Uh, maybe because it's you know kind of like a I guess maybe a typical winter, but I mean it's you know we're having real cold snap right now, and and you know there was a cold snap earlier on, and it seems like we got a pretty good snow cover that's going to be around for a while. So I imagine the rabbits are kind of hunkered down right hunkered, now. Yeah, and, hunkered and down and they're, not you know, moving much. So now, does a rabbit live in the hole in the ground, or do they live in the brush? Do they? They live in the holes. I mean, like the old find different holes when you're walking through the woods. Um, a lot of times where we, like a lot of different places we hunt, they in like junk, old junk piles out in the woods that they'll be in the, the holes and old refrigerators and stuff. And whenever we're hunting, we gotta make sure, okay, make sure you go back to that junk pile because they're gonna go straight to there. It's funny, I read one of the articles I read said, make sure you check if old broken farm equipment laying around. Hell yeah. So it's like old, old stuff like in, in Nixon, you know, Nixon quarters or whatever, you know, whatever you call that, and all the rusty old farm equipment is like, oh, okay. I really <laughs> never thought about that, but I guess that makes a lot of good hiding places, you exactly, know, and, yeah. and uh, places where if something's laying there, it seems like the weeds take over in no time. So maybe that's why. I mean, yeah. you know, it's and there's probably stuff in there that they can eat too. I, I would think. So, so what's you have a favorite um, favorite way to cook up a rabbit? Whenever you, obviously you hunt them because you like to have them. You yeah, like yeah, they're very good. Yeah, tastes like chicken. But most of the time, I usually just fry them up. It's almost like frying chicken. It's the same thing. It's very like fry it in the frying pan, bake it, and here you go. So when I got the rabbit the other week, I'm I'm texting you because I had literally hadn't got one for probably 20 or 25 years because it's like I've had bird dogs since again since about the mid 90s or whatever and maybe got one or two way back early on but it's like I've just been focused on pheasants yeah. ever since you know and so I'm texting you it's like all right do I have to cut the feet off before I pull the skin <laughs> off and how do you do that? So, I, I was so, waiting for you to say can you just come over and clean, <laughs> clean this for me you know what it was really easy it, yeah. it, it, the skin came off like so easy compared to a pheasant oh, it's, it's not the pheasant's not terribly 
probably hard or whatever, but this was easier. Yeah, why don't you pull right off? I mean, it's just like, it's just like, it's just like peeled off, like that got off a sock almost. Yeah. Like, And then I took the feet off after, and I just used the little shears I used to clip the pheasant's wings off and clip the feet off, and they had the same thing. You know, it, it was actually... And I was like, boy, maybe I should hunt some more rabbits. Because I, I had I had fun going out with you that yeah, day. It's, it's um, a lot of fun. Yeah. So talk about your friends that were out there that day, and and uh, you know the, um, the the whole the whole process of organizing a rabbit. Oh yeah, hunt. basically, I mean, I just texted a or texted a bunch of my friends saying if they wanted to go hunting because it's better if you kind of have a couple guys walking through the woods because you can kick up different brush piles. Um, good thing is a couple of those friends had a nice piece of property we can hunt on, so. It's nice to have a bunch of friends with some good piece of property that you can hunt and find some rabbits on. So if you're going to go with two guys or three guys or whatever, now you now this when we're doing a pheasant hunt, we generally will, will go kind of in a line and maybe split up 40, 50 feet apart or whatever and try and sort of stay kind of parallel yeah. as you're going along. Same thing, Same with, thing with rabbit hunting, yeah, but then you're going to be zigzagging through the woods, so just make sure you cover as much ground as possible. Now if you're going through like a, maybe there's a, a cornfield or whatever and there's, you know, it kind of comes to an end or whatever, sometimes we'll send somebody ahead that's the, the blocker, you know, and so like two or three of us will, and the dogs will push through and then, and then because the birds do, sometimes they want to run to the end and then, yeah. you know, they're like, they're going to flush at the end, but they're going to be out, out in front of you. So if you let somebody sneak down there, do you do, can you do something like that? No, not, not really. really. You just kind of keep walking, no, because that's why you have the dogs that kind of track them down and get the scent. Which is good. And, and it seems like when a pheasant does run in a field like that, they generally they want to run away from you, but they tend to run in a straight line. Now, a rabbit, it generally doesn't necessarily yeah. run in a straight, or does it? Uh, it's run, most of the time it'll run in a straight and it'll curve around almost like a big, it makes a big circle. I mean, a lot of times when you're, like my, so my dogs will run pheasants too. So a lot of times you can tell the difference between if a dog's running a pheasant or a rabbit is if it's going straight in a straight line or if it's starting to curve a little bit, it's like, okay, they're on a rabbit. Yeah, okay. Or even if it's, Interesting. If they get on a deer, which is uh, yeah, unlikely for, or misfortune that they get on one, is that it just they, they take off and go. So my dogs are probably like maybe about the same speed as a rabbit, uh, and like pheasants are pretty fast when they run on the ground. But they, the dog cannot run them, so it's like you, you want to get them to flush before mm -hmm. they get too far yeah. too far away from you, you know. And if, but if they're going to run after a rabbit, they're going to probably just run forever, you know, because yeah. it, they're you know not going to catch up to it. Pro no, probably. Most of the time, they're never going to be r like right on the rabbit because the rabbit's so far ahead of them that the rabbit's moving through the woods and trying to get the scent off and move different, go through different woods or waters, just get that scent away so the dogs don't track them. But most of the time they're way ahead of the dog, so you'll never get up to the, um, dog, or the dogs will never get up to the rabbit. So are there any little magical tips that you, you know, that you'd pass along to someone who's thinking about trying it out so they can, you know, actually bring one home, you know, and any uh, tips for success? Um, I guess just getting dogs and being out and training the dog, get a good dog, train them well, um, work with the work with your dogs, know their patterns, um, get them on the scent when they're young. Um, one thing I bought was a tracker from, or, or, tra or links to my phone so I can track where the dog's going, see where they're gonna loop around or where they're at. So that helps with me. That'll help a lot of other people kind of knowing where your dog is and where you're at so then you don't have any, you don't have any ch like um, mistakes of actually shooting, accidentally shooting your dog so you know exactly where they're at or if you lose your dog, that you can exactly know where they're at. There's a little thing on their collar? That, yeah, it's, that's, it's, a tr it's a tracking collar that okay. it links to my phone, and then I can track exactly where they're at. I can buzz them if I need to or anything in that regard. So it's, it's very helpful to use, especially if you're just starting out to know how you work with your dogs and getting them going. So if you're you're picking out a puppy, any, any suggestions on how you look for one that's, you know, um, now, now to me, when I'm, when I was, been been picking out the pup for for my bird hunting. Um, I this is sometimes you know one will kind of like seem like it wants to make eye contact with me and connect with me, and I, I'll and I'll I'll pick the one that's real inquisitive and it's checking everything out or whatever. I want to be at one to run around outside for the first time or you know whatever if that's possible. Anything like that 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 I mean, jumps out to you that ask ask the ask the when you get if you go to the breeder or you're picking out a puppy ask what the, how the parents were hunting. So that's a big thing to know because if the mom or the dad were good hunters and it's going to be a good hunter too. They're going to pass it down through the bloodlines, um, but yeah, make sure that playful puppy, um, good listener. That's a big thing with uh, oh, beagles. I agree with you there. Oh boy, that's a that's huge. Yeah, that's mostly my training with with my dogs has been just getting them to listen because it's like if they start getting too far out and then they chase the bird or if they chase the rabbit yeah, or whatever, then the, the, you know then that's that's gone. Yeah, um, so it's like stay you know stay close you know stay work hard stay close cover yeah. a lot of, cover a lot of ground but but if they if they're not listening and they're out yeah. you know just running a while that's a bad thing. And that just goes back to working with the dog every day, taking them out to the woods, getting them used to your calls and. Now my spaniels they need to run 
pretty much every day. They're they're very energetic. What about beagles? Are they? I mean, are they okay to? Um, maybe not necessarily go every single day. Not every single day. I mean, when we went out that one time, we came back that, at, that night, and both dogs were passed out on the floor all <laughs> night. So <laughs> they get pretty they get pretty tired after that first day of hunting. But I bet your wife's happy about that because oh, they're they were, not they're not bothering everybody and oh, carrying on. Or, yeah, that, that's what happens at my house whenever <laughs> whenever I bring it back and it's like they're worn out. Then it's like, yeah, oh, good. The dogs are being quiet. And they're not, yeah. <laughs> She's like, can you take them hunting more often? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I mean. I mean, it's like they'll be tired, but then you'll get that, you'll get the, like, they'll see my orange hat or the collar. They'll be like, okay, let's go. And they'll be perked right up. So. I know what you mean. I walk past the gun cabinet and it's like, are we going? Are we, is it, you know, when I get their bell collar out and I put, you know, oh, the bell like, call, that's then, a, they're, oh, then they're just yeah. over the door jumping, you know. Bell it's collar. Like, they see me getting my, all my hunting stuff on. They're like, they think, okay, we're going hunting now. It's, <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> Did you come up with any pheasants with that, with them? Uh, we were out, we were out at, wood, at the game lands at Woodcock and um, the one flushed a couple pheasants out, but I didn't have my tag so I couldn't shoot them but they'll flush them out it's it's funny I was I was uh, out it was right around Christmas time and that kind of the start of the second season and I bumped into a guy with a um, with a beagle and he said yeah I didn't think there'd be any pheasants out but he's showing me the pheasant that is you know that his dog got and it's like yeah good for you yeah, yeah. It, it's surprising they'll run them so and I'd been I'd been out walking around for um, oh, probably half an hour at that point. He says, "Oh yeah, I saw." You know, so it's like then it was just it wasn't any time, and we we got a couple. I was just in the wrong spot, you know, yeah, exactly, whenever yeah. we get out there. So I'm glad I bumped into him. That was <laughs> yeah, that was a good thing. So, well, I know Lisa's working away on cooking up cooking up that rabbit. So I'm looking forward to oh, that. Yeah, so sure. so we're gonna we're gonna see Chef, Chef Lisa next on some rabbit cooking here. Joining us now, Chef Lisa, Lisa Beck. So Lisa, Hello. cooking rabbit, we've never done that before. You know, I haven't either. So this is this is a new thing for me as well. I have cooked a squirrel and used a similar recipe. So, um, and that was good. So I have a feeling I'm gonna like this even better. Well, I told Dan before, when I was when I was first starting hunting, when I was like late in my college years and then in grad school, and when I was in grad school, I had some part-time jobs, but I was having a hard time like getting groceries. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'd get to go out on a Saturday and bring back a I'd, I'd bring back, back a, a couple squirrels and a couple rabbits mm -hmm. and a pheasant, whatever, that kind of got me interested in hunting. Right. A and B, I actually had some food that for the following right. week. Right, healthy so. food. I mean, this, yeah, is, this is good. Right. This is really good meat. Um, yeah, I, feed the family. That's what we always say. You know, you got to feed yourself, feed your family. They're out there when they come in season. Might as well. So I'm excited to do this. Well, what's one. what's this one called? Is this is this one going to go in the oven? This one is going to be browned and then into the oven. Okay. 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 So we're going to start off. I'm going to get this going, get some heat on there, um, and we have you know the rabbits all cut up. So we're going first thing we're going to do is we're going to dip it in milk and then we're going to dip dip it into Italian breadcrumbs. And uh, before I actually do that though, I'm going to mix up some seasonings because we're also going to put some seasonings okay. on them. So um, I use a, there really isn't anything specific as far as measurements. So I'll just say a half a teaspoon of each of these, mix them up together, and then you can just generously um, uh, put them on there. So a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Garlic powder. Yes. Okay. A half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Okay. Half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Okay. And then a half a teaspoon, let's see, we did garlic first. Did I say garlic first? Mm -hmm. I knew they're the same color, so onion powder. Onion powder. Okay. So a half a teaspoon of each. And then the last thing we're going to do, and I didn't uh, pre-measure this one, is a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt. And then I'm just going to mix that up, and that's going to be our seasoning to go on there. In, in before it gets breaded? Uh, actually, right after it does. Right after it says season okay. in the pan. Okay. So, so while I, uh, before I actually do that too, I'm going to put some olive oil in the pan because we're going to fry it up in olive oil. You can see that's getting nice and warm there. That's good. I can feel it. Yep. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Um, I want to have this ready. So, you know, if you want to hold oh, it there. Got to get sprayed. Got to get sprayed. I love the spray. There we go. And we will take care of this. So we're going to dip it in milk first, and then the Italian breadcrumbs. Okay, we'll do a couple before I actually stick them in there. So milk, Italian breadcrumbs. You know, I, I, I was telling Dan, I, I did some reading articles because it's like, just this is not totally out of out of my league here, but I hadn't really done rabbit hunting forever and ever. And 
So I was looking up to see, you know, what the tips are that, you know, that right. the different game magazines have for rabbit hunters and so on. And, um, most of them said, oh, yeah, people think rabbits just like chicken. Yeah. So what, do you, what, what do you think? That's what, um, you know, I, I really, I haven't had rabbit probably since I was little. And my husband kept saying that over and over again. Well, about a month ago, you, you know the boys, uh, my boys were at their cousins in Erie. And they called me up and they said, Mom, we, we, we shot some rabbits. Tell me what to do. So I gave them this recipe. And they really liked it. They enjoyed it. So not only do we have them hunting, we have them cooking, which I think is great. Yeah. I'm just going to rinse my hands off real quick. It's like the whole, it's like the whole thing. It, that, that's, I guess, maybe what got me interested in the whole Crawford County Outdoors thing in the first place. Is I, I like the whole process. I love going out and building a tree stand, you know, and, right. and finding the Whoops. right spot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we got, now we, we got to throw that towel in the... We do. We can, okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to season them while they're in here. Get them really good. We did a show not too long ago about how you process that deer once you get it home. Right. Yeah, the, right. The, I'm not saying don't don't take it to the processor if that's what works if, best if, for you. Right. It's to each his own, you know. But, but I, I like the whole process. You know, everything from from all the preparation ahead of time to the harvesting the deer, and it's like that's kind of like the fun part. Sure. But to me, the whole thing is the fun part. And these are cooking up nice and quick. I'm just browning them on both sides. We have our oven set for 300, and what we'll do is we'll, you're going to cook them low and slow. So about 300, an hour and a half, and then they'll be ready. And oh, one little thing. The recipe didn't call for this, but this is what I did. Um, it does tell you to check, you know, to make sure you cover it. And um, so we will put a lid on this, okay. but it said to check every so often to make sure there's liquid in the bottom. I will do this for this recipe, and I did it for my other one. Um, pour a little bit of chicken broth in the bottom just to make sure it starts off with liquid because we don't want it to dry out. That is one thing about game animals. There's not a lot of fat on there, right. so th there isn't going to be, yeah. I, 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 get, I get you on that one. Yeah. So we don't want it to dry out, um, but I think it's going to prove to be delicious so another minute and we'll be we'll put it right into the pan and it'll be ready for the oven almost looks like fried chicken it does it smells like it <laughs> uh the one that was cooking upstairs terry said it said he's it smelled like thanksgiving dinner so <laughs> i think that's a good sign <laughs> well i i was was again looking up these articles and so the number one favorite thing to hunt in the united states is deer right and second is turkey and third it was a tie between rabbits and pheasants ah, and interesting. Then ducks and geese and whatever and you know rabbit squirrels and everything came, came along after but um so i was i was kind of surprised i didn't didn't realize that's you know now in our case in Crawford County it gets too cold in the wintertime for the pheasants to make it through so they're right. all stocked and so it's not you know and we used to get grouse but they're all kind of gone for right. hopefully they're coming back some, someday I hope so being our state bird and all the official state bird of Pennsylvania that's right yeah. that's right but there's always rabbits that is um, true and they're a lot like chicken as they all say <laughs> it's, it's a lot like chicken so we're gonna find out shortly here I think these are about ready I am gonna pour a little bit of the chicken broth into my pan just so there's a little liquid in the bottom covering the bottom to start it off with and you know because i did that with the other one i didn't have to add any liquid so okay. um, i i would recommend it there we go. so they're getting them crispy at the beginning Ooh. that's kind of like searing in the, yeah the yeah. flavors yes And we're going to make sure, Dwayne, that we do put a lid on that. Doesn't that look nice? That looks awesome. That really does. Okay, so we'll put the lid on it. We're going to stick that in the oven. It's three, uh, 300 for an hour and a half. All righty. Top shelf. That's it. That's good. Perfect. Okay. Very good. I don't know why, Lisa, but this is always my favorite part of the show. Uh, me too. Yeah. Me too. I can't wait to see what's in there. All right. Well, let's look. Ooh. Yeah. Look really good. That. It does. It smells really yeah. good too. Well, it is that time. So what's the what's the label for this one? Uh, what did we call it? Yeah. Rabbit a la Lisa. Rabbit. I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I don't know. Why yeah. not, right? Okay, gentlemen. If you want to use a fork or just pick it up, whatever you guys want to do. There you go, 
Wayne. All right. All right. Wow. Oh, it's very tender. It and it really does kind of come apart, just like chicken. Yeah. Exactly like chicken. Mm. Wow. Oh, I like that. Very good. That is excellent. I like that a lot. <laughs> I think we say that every time. <laughs> we are at some point going to have to actually follow through on that cookbook mm -hmm. we've been talking about. Um, I, I do get a lot of requests for that. I said, well, go back and look it up on on you know on the YouTube, YouTube channel and then right. Lisa gives all the ingredients and she gives That's all the right. you know how much time and, and That's right. Yeah. But we still you're right, we still should we should do it. That's really good. Yeah. Nice and tender. It does taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you could use this recipe with chicken too. You know, I always say that you could use whatever you want. So but it's great with rabbit. Well, Dan Nelson, thanks for yep. being our thanks expert rabbit me. hunter. Yeah, Maybe we can you. do this again sometime. Exactly. And, and we'll have to. send you out with some cameras there. There you go. Lisa, excellent, as, thank you. as always. Thank you. Big thanks to the folks at home for joining us on Crawford County Outdoors, and we'll talk to you next time.